This is the HPC 1200 code machine. It's one of the best code cutting machines around, and it is a standard in the industry. There are other manufacturers today that make comparable machines. The machine simplifies the code cutting process by using a reference card and two dials to get the right cut in the right space. Simply insert the code card for the lock you are using and set the space needle to the number one mark on the card. Then turn the depth crank until the depth needle reaches the appropriate depth number. The machine will come with a standard package, but additional specialty code cards, cutters, and adapters are available. Now if you buy an HPC 1200 code machine, you're going to get a big binder with the cards that you'll need to cut a great many different keys with. And you can see that there's quite a few. So the key that we're going to cut today is a quick set key. And so we need to pull the, uh, the cord for the quick set locks. And uh, that's cord number 31. Now some of the information that you can see on here, it shows the depth and spacing. It says the cutter wheel. CW14MC, so you want to always make sure you have the right cutter on your machine. Uh, we know we read the key bow to tip, uh, key blank numbers that work with this card, uh, the depth spaded, depth space dated numbers 46, has a max of 4, progression steps are 1. Then there's a note here, it says if you're using with original pins, widen as shown on the card, but it says if using the CW14C cutter or use CW1014 cutter on the center marks, so it depends if you're using CW1014 or CW-14MC. So, you know, again, there'll be notes like you have to pay attention to. The card number you can see is C31, it says quick set large pen standard. Here's your depths, and we'll see that. We'll bring our depth needle up for the different depths. If we have a three depth, we would bring up to the three. If we have a four depth, you come to the four, and so on. Then for the spacing wheel, we'll bring the needle up to the correct space to make our cut. And you can see there's a little note. What they were just saying with the other note, for the CW14MC, in the original pins, widen the cut a little bit. So that's kind of the basic information that you're going to see on most all of the cards. Here's your depth increments, your space increments. The way it works is there's one knob that you turn for depth adjustment and one turn for space adjustment. Uh, you have a card, the card I just went over with you, we put in this slot right here. We have to be careful as we put it in. There's two needles in here. We don't want to catch those needles with the card and bend the needles, so be cautious of that. But otherwise, you just take the card, slide the card in, and then you simply put the key in the vise, and you turn the knobs to cut the correct space and correct depth. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure we have the correct cutting wheel. There's a number of cutting wheels that come with the machine. Some come standard, some are extra. So when you buy one of these machines, you want to check, you know, if you do buy one. Now, there's other brands, other manufacturers of code cutting equipment. And no matter which one you buy, you want to find out which cutters and accessories come with the machine to cut which keys. But uh, again, these are extra wheels here for different types of keys. The cutting wheel is here. Uh, there is a uh, deburring brush back here to the back. Uh, there is a, a lever here that you can see. I can move up and down. We move this up to put the key in. If we have a shoulder stop key, we use this to line the key up in the vise. And then we have to put that back down out of the way. The machine won't start until you, you put this lever and this guide back down. There's a, a switch there that it 
bumps up against that switch and closes the switch so the machine will operate. That's to make sure that you don't leave that up and accidentally run that into the cutting wheel. Okay, so here's the cutter wheel. Here's the nut that holds the cutter wheel. The uh, machine will come with the tools to uh, take the cutter wheel off. Uh, this is a reverse thread, so um, instead of turning it counterclockwise to loosen it, we would turn it clockwise to loosen it. And there's no need to put this on too tight. If you put this on very tight, it can be difficult to get that back off. But uh, let's check and make sure we have the right cutting wheel on the machine. We're supposed to use 14MC. You can see right here, this is the CW14MC cutting wheel. Now you want to make sure you put it on right. The uh, There's no writing on the back of the wheel. You want to make sure you can see the writing. There's also an arrow that shows the direction that it's going to turn. Remember, you're going to turn the, the nut counterclockwise to tighten it, since it's reverse thread. And then just just snug that a little bit. Not too much. Okay, so we have the correct card. We got the correct cutting wheel. Okay, we have two keys to cut. For duplex one, we're going to cut four, five, three, two, two. And for duplex two, we're going to cut two, three, three, four, four. Now again, this uh, we're going to use it's a KW1 key, quick set key, and so we're going to turn this this crank here on this side, which is for our spaces. Move this over so we can get the key to put in the vise. Bring this lever up because it's a shoulder stop key. Now on the card, it does show us on the card uh, which jaw to use. We use jaw A. And jaw A is already on here, so we're, uh, we're ready to go with that. So, again, bring our lever up. Catch the shoulder. Tighten the vise up. Put the lever back down. Okay, so I'm going to be operating the machine with these two levers. We're going to go ahead and move the key over to where it's on space one. I'm using this as the space wheel here to turn that. And I'll show you the face of the card in just a second so you can see what the needles are doing. But for this is this is the what I'm going to be doing as far as moving the knobs. Once I've got it to space one, then our first cut for duplex one is, is a four. The cuts were four, five, three, two, two. So I'm going to bring the camera up so you can watch the needles move on the card. But uh, I'll be turning these two knobs to cut the key. Okay, we're all set. We're going to cut the first key to four, five, three, two, two. <laughs> Up to the four, and we turn the space bar handle back and forth a little bit. We back off the depth adjustment and we move to the number two. Number two is a five cut, so we bring it up to the five. We widen that cut a little bit. Back off on the space, or on the depth adjustment. Move to space number three. This is going to be a three. I'm going to go to number four. Number four is a two. Move to the number five cut, that's a two. And that's it. That's cut. So we have a, I can go ahead and brush it. 
That's our key right there. You can see it's nicely cut with a four, five, three, two, two. Now we'll do the next one is uh, two, three, three, four, four. For so we'll go back to space number one. Okay, so two, three, three, four, four. Number three is a three. Number four is a four. And number five is a four. Go ahead and brush that key up. Two, three, three, four, four. But if you don't have a code machine, you can cut your keys using space and depth keys. And uh, I went over space and depth keys in the last course, course number four, so I don't want to spend too much time on that in this course, but just real quickly, the space and depth key will have the same cut all the way down the key. So these are number five cuts all the way down. I look at a different one. This is a number six cut. Six cuts all the way down the key. So let's just take, for example, we want to cut this key two, three, three, four, four. You would start with your shallowest cut, your number two cut. Cut your number two cut in number one, or you could cut it all the way across since it's the shallowest cut, it wouldn't matter. But cut a number two cut in the number one space. And the next deepest cut is number three. Put your number three space and depth key in and cut your space your cuts for number two and your number three cuts. Then put your number four space and depth key in and cut your last two cuts in four and five, and that key will be done. So I'm going to cut the last key that we cut, the two, three, three. Four, four. So we have the number two depth and space key in, and we're going to we're going to cut all of the cuts because that's that's the smallest or the shallowest cut on the key is a two. So we're going to go ahead and cut twos all the way across. Next shallowest cut is a three, so we'll, we'll put the three in. Now this key is a two, three, three, four, four. So we're going to cut the second and third depths to a three. We can go ahead and cut all of those because the the four and five cuts are number four. So we're going to go ahead and finish uh, the two. I'm going to cut the two, three four and five spaces down to number three. Now we need a number four cut for the number four and number five spaces. And we always want to brush off, if there is any slag on there, uh, brush that off. You don't want that in your lock. Another thing that you can do 
If you don't have space and depth keys or a code machine, you could just pick keys out of your key bucket and then use them to create a master key system for a small setup. For example, you have a triplex. Uh, you could pull four keys out, use one key for your master key, and then three for your change keys. It's not going to meet all of the rules that we went over for a master key system, but there are millions of setups like this in existence, and for the most part, they work okay. So it's, it's not the best solution, but it is one possible solution if you had to do it. You can actually make a simple master key system without a code machine or space and depth keys by just using keys from your own key bucket. We have everything we need here to get started pinning up these locks for our, our master key project. We have new dead bolts. These are quick set dead bolts. One for duplex one and one for duplex two. Now these are new dead bolts so we won't have to bother checking these for master pins. We have the original keys for each dead bolt. We have our master key that we cut. We have the key for duplex one and the key for duplex two. We have our quick set tool to get the clips off the dead bolts, off the back of the plugs. We have a plug holder, we have a plug follower, we have a pair of tweezers in case we need them to put the pins in. So we're ready to go ahead and get started. For duplex one, we know that our, our bottom pins will be two, three, one, two, two. And our master pins are all number twos. We need three of those. So we'll go ahead and pull our pins out. We can see on the back of the lab kit the chart for quick set that indicates a number two cut would be a bottom pin of 192. A number three cut would be a 216. And a number one would be a 171. And that's all we'll need for this, this particular lock because we had three number two pins, one number one pin, and one number three pin. Then the number two master pins are 45 thousandths. So this is again, this is where we get the information for which pins to pull from the lab kit. We'll need three number two pins, which are, are 192 thousandths, and I'll pull all three at one time. We need one number three pin, which was 216 thousandths, and we need one number one pin, which is 171 thousandths. So I have all the pins pulled for the bottom pins. We'll go ahead and get the master pins. These are very tiny pins, 45 thousandths. I'm going to go ahead and just lay them on the table here so we'll have them ready. We need three of these. If we had a, a great many locks to key up, to pin up, I would pull as many pins as I could at one time to keep from going back and forth into the lab kit to get the pins. It just speeds things along. We'll go ahead and pin up this lock for duplex one. Now hopefully you've watched the video on rekeying and you already know how to rekey locks. The emphasis here is simply on showing you how to master key the lock. But um, we start by getting the clip off of the end of the plug. We take the original key so that we can turn the plug. Use a follower to push the plug out just like we do in rekeying. Dump out the old pins, toss them out. Then I'm going to go ahead and put in the, the master key into the plug so that we can see it being pinned up. Now, the bottom pins are right here, two, three, one, two, two. That's the first pin's the number two. The second chamber was a three. And we need a one. Then 
and the last two are both twos. So that's pinned up for the master key. We can see that all of these bottom pins are to the top of the plug forming a nice even shear line so the plug can turn when this key is inserted. And we'll take that key out and put in the change key for duplex one. And now we can see that in the first three chambers the pins have dropped down. So this key will not work as it's currently pinned. So we need to put in our master pins. And as you remember, we had all number two master pins in these first three, these first three chambers, chamber one, chamber two, chamber three. Now these are very small pins. I can usually get them with my fingers, but I have a pair of tweezers handy if, if I need them. So now we can see that with this key, it's pinned up again nice and flush with a, a nice flush shear line for change key number one for duplex one. We'll put this back into the lock cylinder. Put the clip on the back. And we can try our key. This is our key number one, our change key. And this is the master key. And we can see that they both work just fine. So duplex one is pinned up and ready to go. Okay, the lock for duplex two will need the bottom pins, two, three, one, two, two. And again, these just happen to be the same in this example. They will not always be the same like this as you're doing a master key system. But we need the same bottom pins and then on the master pins, again, we need three twos, but they go into different chambers, chambers three, four, and five. Okay, we'll go ahead and pull the pins, the bottom pins. In this particular example that I'm doing, the bottom pins are the same for both duplexes. We need the uh, three of the 192s, which are the number two cut. We need one of the number three cuts, which was 216 thousandths, and one of the number one. And then again, we're going to need three of the little tiny master pins, the 45 thousandths. So we have all the pins pulled now. So we'll go ahead and take this plug out, get the clip off the back. We'll use the original keys to turn the plug, which will allow us to take the plug out. Use a follower and push the plug out with the follower. Take those pins and throw them away. Put the master key in and we'll go ahead and we'll pin this. We had a two in the first chamber and we had a three then we had a, a one and then two and two so we can see that this has formed a nice even shear line for the master key in this plug for a duplex number two. Now we'll take this key out and we'll put in 
our change key for duplex 2. And we can see that now the bottom, the back three chambers, chambers 3, 4, and 5 are low. And we need to put our master pins in there. And now by adding those, we have a nice even shear line for this change key. Okay, so we'll put that back into the, the lock cylinder. Put our clip on the back. Now normally there would be a tailpiece here. I've just left those off to, because I'm just basically showing how to master key the lock, but I cover the tail pieces in the rekeying video. But there would be a tail piece on that. So this, now for the second duplex, we can see that the change key works, and we can see that the master key works. Master key will work in both the number two cylinder and in the number one cylinder. So that key works both locks and we have our change keys for each one also. So all we have to do is put these on the building and we're through with this master key system for that particular project. I've gone ahead and cut these keys on the code machine for our uh, four triplex example and we're going to pin up a lock that all of these keys well, three of these keys will work. We're going to do the AA1, so the top master key or the grand master key will work, the AA key will work, and the AA1 key will work, and then you'll see that the AB master key will not work in that lock. And I've stamped them. The top master key or grand master key A, master key AA, master key AB, and our first change key for the AA master key AA1. So we'll pin the lock up and we'll see if these keys will work okay. So we're going to go ahead and pin up lock AA1 and we do this just like we did before with the duplex. We find our bottom pins and we have three keys that we're working with but on these top two keys four of the numbers are the same. So it doesn't matter which one we compare to. And on this number one chamber the change key and the master key have the same cut, three, so we're going to compare to the cut that's different, the one in the grandmaster key. So again, we go through and we get the smallest number, and we're comparing this first chamber, we're going to compare against the one. Okay, in the next chamber, which is smaller, two or four, we have two, five or one, we have one, six or two, we have two, three or one, we have one. And now we subtract from the largest number to get the master pins. So we have three from one is two, four from two is two, one from five is four, two from six is four, one from three is two. So our bottom pins are one, two, one, two, one, and the master pins are two, two, four, four, two. So our bottom pins are 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. We have those laid out here. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. They're 170 thousandths and 195 thousandths out of an 005 lab kit. And our master pins are 2, 2, 4, 4, 2. They're here 2, 2, 4, 4, 2. They're 45 thousandths on the 2s and 90 thousandths on the 4s. So we'll go ahead and pin those up. Okay, so I have all of the pins in the plug. We're going to slide it back into the shell. Turn it around so it locks in. Put his clip back on it. Okay, so we'll check our keys. We'll start with the change key. This is the AA1 change key. For This would be lock cylinder AA1. Works just fine. It's not unusual to find the keys a little sticky when you add master pins, but that, that key works fine. That's AA1. This is key AA. Mark AA. This is the cut 32563. 
It, it again, you know, it's a little bit sticky, and I think it's just the master pin is causing that. It, but uh, you know, it'll obviously open the lock fine. So that's key, master key AA. Then this is grandmaster key A. It works. It works real smooth. So that's that key. So all three of those keys do work just fine. And then master key A B should not work. And of course, it doesn't. So that lock cylinder for change key AA1 is pinned up and ready to go. So I marked that cylinder AA1. In a two level system, the change keys are marked with the number before the letters, like 1AA, 2AA, etc. With three or more levels, the change keys are marked AA1 and AA2, and so on, with the numbers after the letters. Please take just a moment to like the video and also subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.